Believers, listen. There is one thing I want you to learn. There's one skill I want you to develop. This skill will keep you out of multitudes of problems, troubles, and difficulties. It is not a magical formula. It's something you need to practice and you need to take seriously for it to work. But once you master this skill, my God, you will be far ahead in life. You'll bypass a lot of hinder, a lot of danger. You'll even be a beneficial influence on others escaping danger too. So you'll benefit yourself and those around you who are open to solutions. What is the skill I'm talking about? Or what is the attitude better that you need to take? Here it comes. What are other people doing? That's a question to ask yourself. You may think, what was it? You, talk, you, you were talking about a skill, an attitude, and now you come with the question, what are other people doing? I'm sorry, but what can... Rashid, I can't control what other people are doing. So why should I even ask that question? Okay, okay, okay. Let me explain it to you. You are a vulnerable creature, like all human beings are. You are a community creature also. You need to socially bond. And you are not a little god that can sustain yourself all by yourself. Not possible. You need other people to remain alive and remain stable and sane. So it's natural that the public or the people around you have expectation of you. They expect you not to speed on the roads, not to drunk drive. They expect you uh, to not raise your voice unnecessarily. They expect you uh, to be calm, to be considerate. People have the right to expect things from you, especially when it relates to their safety and their well-being. People have the right to expect you to comply with their well-being, with safety and all of that. So you owe other people, naturally. However, the other way around is also true. Others owe you too. You're, you're a human being just like they are human beings. So why should it only be you with obligation towards them? But when it comes to you, you are a disposable option. What the heck is that? So let's say now you have a child and you have a parent slapping the child. Using violence on a child. They say, oh, it's correction. The, the child is doing respect, blah, blah, blah. That same adult, would they do the same to a grown man or a grown woman? No, they wouldn't. Because they would be in trouble. We would be in a fist fight or maybe arrested or maybe be charged with assault uh, in a court of law. Now, if the, if you, if, let's say you were this child in a supermarket. You were a little bit loud and your parent came to slap you. You should have memories of if you remember that it happened to you, you should also have memories of others uh, jump in and say, hey, sir, what are you doing? What is this? If you don't have memory of the second happening, that means the community violated you by allowing you, a vulnerable child, to remain in danger. If they did not deal with your parents, the community has violated you. Let's say now you're an adult. Let's say... Well, you, you just lost a loved one, you just went to the funeral. You're just still emotionally and mentally a bit unstable because you lost a loved one. You still need to, you need to recover because you're still grieving. And while you're grieving now, yeah, let's say you're a woman and you're still grieving and you have this man approaching you. And you end up being sexually involved with this guy. Now, everyone can see that, hold on a minute, even though the sexual involvement is consensual and from both sides, it's still not a proper one because he kind of pushed himself on you while you were at your most vulnerable state. And because of that, the relationship is unequal. He is actually exploiting you, but you're not even aware of it. So the community should have been there to say, hold on a minute, dude. I know you like her, this and that, but come on, just hold on a minute. Don't you see she's just, just grieving right now? Thing is, this guy didn't even wait till you were in your healthy state of mind. 
to get involved with him. You were in a damn state of mind and you made the move because he did not have the confidence to relate to you in a healthy way. So we took advantage of you grieving for, uh, about your loved one. Now, such relationships will always go sour. And let's say years later, you're divorcing your, 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 uh, your husband now because you went through a lot of domestic violence. And now that you're divorcing the man, people are supporting you, this and that. But then one of your friends from abroad is asking you, uh, Jenny, let's say I'm just using a fictional stuff, but Jenny, where were all these people when you met this guy? Where were they? What were they doing? They all saw that you were heartbroken, that you were shot because uh, one of your relatives passed away, that you were close to. They all saw this guy getting, suddenly getting involved with you in a deep way. They all saw it was odd. How come none of them intervened or at least did investigation or, or watch over you? I know for sure if you started drinking a lot, or if you start smoking a lot, or if you start hoarding around a lot, people would say something about it. And they would say, just because you're grieving, because your love and passed away, is no excuse for you uh, to be horrible like this. I know for sure if you fail their, their expectations, they will, they will put consequences on you. Whether it's uh, talking bad behind your back, or shaming you, or cause you to be fired from your job, or that will lead to homelessness, or even suing you in a court of law. If you, if you broke the, uh, the country's uh, restrictions called laws, if you failed them, there would be a consequence on you. How come now they failed you on purpose and suddenly now that their failures are almost got you killed with this, with this creep that, uh, that you married, suddenly they all come out and supporting you. And some even have the nerve to blame you for all the whole situation. You're not a little G, you're not a little God. You don't know everything. There are times, as a vulnerable creature, you need intervention on your, on your own behalf. Sometimes, as a human being, you need intervention from others on your behalf. Because you're not God, you don't have it all under control, and you don't know everything, and things can overtake you. Simple as that. How come the community expect the sensitivity, consideration, empty, all those qualities from you? How come they demand and insist quality from you, but they will not have quality towards you? What is this? How come every time things go wrong, it's all on you? But every time things are well, the community says, well, you didn't, you didn't arrive there by yourself. Other people helped you on the way. How come when it comes to a pleasant outcome, everyone wants to uh, have a part of it? How, how come when it's a bad outcome or a difficulty, suddenly everyone has uh, is, everyone is minding their own business? Nobody's involved. Nobody wants to hear about it. Listen to what I'm saying, believers. You need to ask yourself the question, what are other people doing? It is your concern what others are doing. Because if others are not doing the will of Heavenly Father, if they're not being consistent, if they're not craving to be of quality, if they are not looking after one another, if they're not even in harmony with God's will, that means that they're wasting away. And then wasting away generates pollution in the climate. And that pollution is going to harm them and everyone around, including you. I'm not telling you to put, to break into people's houses and install cameras and get yourself in trouble with the law. I'm telling you to do that. I'm not telling you to go to fortune tellers or to, uh, I don't tell you to, uh, to, do, uh, to go into things like astral projection, all that shit, which is not even possible as a believer anyway. I'm telling you to pay attention to what people are doing. It's natural for the community to expect things from you. It's natural that you owe other people. But others owe you too. Where is their part? And let's say you called out their neglect sometime, uh, sometime and they gaslight you or they attacked you. Some people even attack you physically when you call out their neglect because you can't handle reality. Or what if people begin to shoot code, uh, make excuses for their neglect and put it all on you? Anytime that happens, listen, what other proof do you need? These people are untrustworthy, unreliable, they're low quality. Now, it may hurt, it may be painful, but you need to accept that's what they are. Can they improve and become better? Yes, they can. Are you guaranteed they will improve and get better? No, you're not. So you're not going to act 
based on potential. You're going to act based on probability. Yet, it's a possibility those people may become better. Indeed. It's a lovely possibility. But if it's not probable, if it's not likely they will change for the better, why are you still around them? And why are, are you still insisting on them becoming better, even though it's not probable they will ever become better? Listen. When Jesus went back to Nazareth the first time, they jumped on him, began to beat him up. Even Jesus ran away, they went after him, even, even to the point of trying to throw him off a cliff. The second time Jesus went back, this time with his disciples, um, Jesus had more support in the public now, even from the military, so the people in Nazareth behaved themselves. But still they were resistant towards him. They were hindering him in doing his ministry. That's how deep-rooted their unbelief was. Unbelief is something, something quite dangerous. Now, some of Jesus' physical relatives eventually repented and became powerful believers way afterwards, way after the resurrection, all of that. But at the time that Jesus was still walking around on the earth in that human body, they were not improving. So that moment that they were not improving, Jesus kept his safe distance and Jesus made sure he continued. Jesus gave the opportunity and later some of them did improve. Others didn't. But Jesus didn't wait till they improved. Jesus uh, kept doing his mission, the same we should be. Ask yourself the following question. What are other people doing? What are other people doing? You need to ask yourself that question. If you have this added, well, what other people are doing is none of my business, none of my concern, it's not about me, then your own narcissistic bullshit will get you in trouble. Anyone in the right mind pays attention to environment. Animals do that. Check the crocodile. Check um, the lion. Check the zebra. Check the giraffe. Even the bees out there, the insects, they pay attention to environment. And you just want to escape in some r routine of relief? What the heck is wrong with you? What the heck is wrong with you? Listen, you need to outgrow that sin attitude of yours. Sin is escapism. Outgrow it. What are other people doing? Again, I'm not telling you to become a gossiper. I'm not telling you to become to, to start stalking people. I'm telling you to look at what others are doing. I don't think what they're doing at the moment that you encounter them. Someone may be tired and because they don't have response because it's just the tired came from coming from work. That they're not responsible towards you doesn't mean they're on that they are a, a neglectful individual. They're just tired and they, they cannot function well at the moment. I'm talking about what are they doing in general? What is the default attitude in life? What are other people doing? And if the public failed you, or worse, if the public violated you, and there is not even a sign of recognizing what happened to you. Listen, your attitude should be, it happened for me. It happened for me. Why did it happen for you? Because now they expose themselves. They disqualified themselves. Listen, they disqualified themselves by not facing themselves and improving as individuals and as a group. Once they disqualified themselves, it happened for you. So now you know, okay, not around these people. I deserve better and I should look for better. And you know what? That they are of quality, I can't help that. But you know what? Let me not make excuses for myself. Let me be of quality. So whatever happened, happened for you. That's what your mentality has to become. It happened for you. And that's why you also need to be aware of what are other people doing. If you never ask this question, what the heck is wrong with you? Seriously, improve. You need to improve. Was it for now? Keep agreement with Christ and be at peace.